So we've started to lose a lot of our trees here in western South Dakota and across other western states as well because the hydrology in our systems is broken. We're losing our water table and that's affecting our ability to recruit new woody species. There's other compounding factors as well like land management and invasive species and things like that. But ultimately it's because our, our streams are down cutting and that's dropping our water table. And that's one of the reasons why we're not seeing the recruitment of our, our willow and our ash and our cottonwood. And so beaver coming back into a system can seem like a negative thing for a landowner who wants to save the few trees they have left. And that's a understandable concern. There was an old adage that, I don't know where it came from, but beaver are bad. Well, the history says that if we'd left beaver in all these streams, a lot of our flooding down south in the Missouri River would have been slowed down, even, even the local flooding. But uh, we need to slow this water down before it leaves here. If you think about it in, in the longer term, having those beaver back are gonna help you recruit more trees and promote more regeneration because those beavers are gonna start storing and holding water that's gonna help us grow more trees. In the sites where beavers have come back into, they will limb off these branches of these ash and willow trees and stick them in the creek for their food caches. And what doesn't get eaten that winter will regrow in the spring. So you cut down one branch and you have 50 new sprouts come out of it. And that's how we get regeneration. Willow and, and ash have evolved to, to regenerate with beaver for thousands of years in this landscape. And they need that beaver activity to regrow and to colonize new areas. Right, likewise, having the beavers will help the trees that we do have access water for longer into the dry summer and buffer those species a bit against drought as well when we have year in and year out dry periods here because we have so much water in our soil profile when we have beaver on our place. We're back at Pat Guptill's place um, after being here about two years ago and this project in general started by these questions from landowners like Pat who wanted to know what they could do to help improve their, their stream systems, to help get more water on their place and to recreate some of the natural stream channels that we used to have. And that's kind of how we came around to the idea of returning beaver to these systems. Two years ago we started building structures called beaver dam analogs to try and mimic the role that beaver have in these stream systems of slowing water down, of spreading water out, of uh, making that water more available to the plant and animal community out here. And we've really seen some remarkable change in a short amount of time. We've seen beaver return to some of these stream systems like we have here on Pat's Place and a few other ranches out west here as well. This spring, we saw our first kind of big runoff events after a few years of drought. And the structures that we built uh, held up surprisingly well. I thought that we may see uh, a lot of washing out and we saw some of that, but the structures that we built also caught a lot of sediment. They recruited a lot of this deep rooted vegetation that we'd like to see. Um, and they started the jump starting process. This work really is uh, a process. That's why it's called process-based restoration. And the goal of the, the beaver dam analogs that we're building is to help the system become more self-sustaining. It's not to recreate a stream channel or to do the work for it. It's to help the water move slower through that channel to reduce erosion and to help get us back to a, a more self-sustaining state. And we saw our structure start to do that. Beaver Dam moved in this last spring and I've got another one on down the creek a little ways at maybe 100 yards down the creek. Uh, got water slowed up here and kind of what we've been wanting to do. I've got beaver on both sides of us, the neighbors have them and they're trapping them, but they're showing up here. Hopefully we can get things slowed down and expand these beaver dams the full length of our creek. Eventually I'm sure they will. 
one of the ways that we promote healthy stream systems is to make room for them, right? To kind of get out of the way and let the water move across the valley bottom as it naturally should. And that lays down fresh sediment, it spreads seeds around, it's how we grow cottonwoods. So this system we have here is what we know it as, but it's not necessarily what the historic state was and is not necessarily what the full potential of the system could be. We're trying to be, mimic beaver as best we can to ensure the success of our structures and our efforts. And uh, based on some analysis done by some research partners, they figured out that this stream system would have supported anywhere from eight to 24 beaver dams per mile. The beavers would have been very pervasive in these stream systems. Not all the dams would have been as big as this one you see here. They would have been small dams. They would have been kind of spread out all over this valley bottom and pushed water up into side channels, into oxbows, and really helped the water access this whole valley bottom that we have here. Having one or two dams like we have here is, is really just the start, and it's a really good start. But that density of dams is what gives them strength. There's strength in numbers, and one giant dam can be vulnerable to, to flooding and to drought. But when the beaver are able to build six, seven, eight, nine dams in a, in a stream reach, there's really a lot of power and a lot of strength and sustainability in that replication of those beaver dams. Because we're slowing the water down so many times in that stream channel. So if one dam blows out or two, oh, that's fine, because there's gonna be more dams downstream that now are not gonna see the flood power that those upstream dams experienced. Hopefully we can get things slowed down and expand these beaver dams the full length of our creek eventually, I'm sure they will. This beaver dam is here to stay. Anytime they get this big, they are here to stay. There's been water over the top of this one three times this year, and it's, it's still here and still doing good. When you see a dam show up on your property, it may not be what you want. You may think, oh, is this gonna be okay? But if you just kind of leave the system alone and let it happen, you may be really, really happy with the results you have a few years from now. <laughs>